Hi everyone and welcome back. So in today's video I'm going to be doing a mixed media art journal page tutorial and I'm going to be using a prompt list and I'm going to be using the Take 5 prompt list for the month of May. And I won't go into too much detail now about the collaboration group and the prompt list because I have explained it before in previous episodes of this series. So if you want to learn, out, learn more, um, I'll leave a link to the playlist in the iCard section so you can watch some of the previous videos where I go into more detail. Um, but the five prompts for May, I just showed you just there on the screen, but very quickly, feathers, washi tape, circles, stamps or stencils, and then using one non-art material to make marks with. Those were the prompts picked for May. And what I'm doing is I'm starting out by fussy cutting a load of feathers out of this lovely page of pattern paper. And I believe this pattern paper is from one of the Amy Tangerine collections. I've had it in my stash in my box full of pattern paper for a long time now. I think I bought it a couple of years ago and I've just kind of been waiting for the perfect moment to use it. It was one of my favourite pieces. I love the colours and the, the feathers on this piece and as one of the prompts for this month's uh, page was feathers, I thought it'd be an excellent chance to use this um, sheet of pattern paper and especially as I actually didn't have anything else that had feathers on it, I was considering drawing some feathers, but when I saw this page, I remembered that I had this page and then I, I, I dug it out and I realized it would be perfect. And it's also a really nice way of using pattern paper. I love ha having pattern paper. I'm always attracted to buying pattern paper. I usually resist buying it, but occasionally I do grab a, grab a page or grab a sheet. If I'm buying some stuff and it's on sale, I'll, I'll grab a sheet. Um, but if you have a lot of it around, fussy cutting out little elements is a great way of incorporating it into your art journals. You can hand cut embellishments, you can hand cut focal points, and it's just a really nice way of um, using the scrapbooking paper that in, in, in another way in, in, the, in, in mixed media art journal. Uh, art journal. So um, that's what I did with that. And now I'm using a couple of distress inks to start my background. And I'll leave a full list of all the supplies that I'm using in the description box below. So you can check that out if you want to know the exact names of the colours. I can't offhand remember the colour names. Um, and I, I do have notes which I will transfer to the video description uh, box when I upload this video. But I had I used three Distress Oxide inks in the background. And I just basically layered them up. I just started with some um, strong marks in the very background then I spritzed it with water wiped it down then I used the sponges themselves um, these little round sponges to stamp with and to create like a dotted a circle uh, effect in the background then I went round the outside of the page with the blue ink and then I just spritzed it with some more water just to make the ink run a little bit more it's just a question of building up different layers of lots of different textures and shapes and these little sponges they were from Doris and they're my favorite because well a they come in a box so you don't have to worry about storage and you don't have to worry about getting ink everywhere when you have lots of ink um, sponges that have uh, pigment inks on them and you put them on your desk and your desk gets covered in ink. The nice thing is that they come in a box so you can keep them all in the box. They're all nice and clean and organized and I can just put them on the shelf. But the other nice thing is the because they're circles you can use them to blend the inks and you can use them to stamp with to create these circles in the backgrounds and I they they sort of like there's it's, it's like having a two in one tool like they're my favorite and they've been really useful and they weren't very expensive either so that was really nice. So once I did that, now I'm moving on to doing some stenciling. And I'm using my white gesso as I normally do. I think I've mentioned it before, but I like the white gesso because it's semi-transparent, so you can stencil and stamp with it and brush it over other colors and you don't get completely get rid of the colors you just sort of create a transparency overlay over them and I like that because if I was using acrylic paint it, I think it would be too bold and I like the semi-transparent effect and so I, I did some stenciling there and now I'm using some non-art supply materials to make marks with so this is a little bit of bubble wrap and I've just sort of spread some gesso on top of it and I, I'm just sort of pressing it down and bubble wrap is a great uh, tool to use to get very interesting texture and now I've got a little piece of corrugated cardboard and I just grabbed this off an old Amazon package and I just sort of tore away the the card a little bit to reveal those ridges in the um, 
in the inner bit of the cardboard you know sometimes you have the ridges and then you have like a, a very thin piece of brown paper over it and once you separate the two you can um, expose the ridges and those ridges create really great uh, mixed media textured looking marks and um, I actually have gone ahead and I've cut up a whole Amazon uh, box into little squares so that I have plenty of these because I really loved the effect they gave and when I was layering up the background uh, another thing that I often think about when I'm creating these backgrounds is to get a combination of different textures so I have and different forms so I have circles I have um, I'm sort of using the brush to uh, not quite kind of make, make stripes across the page and then I have the tiny little ridges but I'm making sure that everything's going in a different angle I don't want anything uniform I want a combination of shapes and colors and then layers and those three things put together creates a really nice layered um, completed look. I really like the combination of circles with lines because I feel like they they contrast enough. Um, they go together nicely but there's a good contrast there so it's, it, I feel it's more visually appealing. Anyway, I hope that makes some sort of sense and you can kind of see what I'm saying. But anyway, I like combining straight lines and circles together on a page. Basically, that's what I'm saying. So now I've um, added in the washi tape. That was another prompt from um, this month's challenge. And now I'm just kind of playing around with the feathers. Now, uh, just to let you know, I have cut quite a bit of the footage out of this video because I spent a good 45 minutes playing around with those feathers and playing around with the stickers a bit later on. I was moving them all over the place and I figured that that would be pretty boring to watch. So I have cut some footage out and I just kind of kept in the, my final decisions. But I was thinking with these feathers, you could just do so many things. I was thinking you could scatter them all over the page. If you were making like a Disney themed page, you know, with like the Pocahontas with the leaves flying in the wind, about these feathers, because they look a little bit like leaves as well as being feathers. Um, that would look really nice. Uh, you, I thought I could make like a big feather bouquet on one side of the page. I, at one point I was considering drawing a girl's face and then just putting the feathers in her hair like ha having a feather headdress. I had so many ideas but in the end I decided to keep them scattered but in scattered clumps because I really wanted to keep the background. I was really really happy with the background. The colour combination was a bit unusual but I felt like it really worked and I thought that if I started drawing faces and or clumping the leaves all on one side of the page I would end up losing a lot of the background. So I decided to keep it simple and I decided to add a quote because I had um, a sticker sheet out and it had some really nice little quotes on it that kind of went with the feathers and the kind of the adventure vibe sort of that I was going for here. So I'm, I decided to take one of those stickers and I stuck it down onto some grey cardstock to sort of just mat it so it helped it stand out a little bit more from the background and you can see I'm still playing around a bit with several of those stickers. I actually had three out at this at this point but uh, I ended up putting a couple away and I just used a tiny little banner and these stickers were from the Echo Park paper pad, the Just Be You collection, and I particularly like the sticker sheets. I, I like the sticker sheet, the scrapbooking store sticker sheets, because they come with uh, elements, they come with, uh, the graphics are always really nice, but they also come with alphabet stickers, they come with little banners, they come with little uh, cutouts, they have a really nice selection of things, so if you're decorating or just using them in crafting or um, artwork in general, but it's a really nice selection of stickers, they're some of my favourite stickers, the Echo Park paper uh, sticker sheets anyway. So now I'm really just fussing around and kind of thinking, can I add anything more to the page, is it done? Um, Normally I feel like a page is done when either I feel like I can't add, physically add anything more to the page or usually I stop it when I feel like if I add anything more to the page it will ruin it. Sometimes you can feel like that at several points during the process of creating an art journal page. Uh, particularly when you've just done the background, you can feel like, oh, I love this background, I don't want to add anything else to it. And sometimes it's nice not to. Um, but often I usually push through that a little bit more and I kind of get the page to a point where I feel like, a, I can't add anything more to this page. I don't physically know what else I could add to it. And also I feel like if I add anything more, I will ruin it. So I kind of get those two feelings to combine and that's when I feel like the page is done. And I'm just going in at this moment and I'm adding a white outline round all the feathers with my white Posca paint pens. And I really should do a review of these because I've been using the Posca paint pens for 
five years. I mean, I've never really used any gel pens. I've always used the Posca paint pens. If you look back at my oldest videos, I'm always using the white Posca paint pen to make my white highlights. It's my favorite pen and I've got, I've got through so many of them. I actually have a special DIY project in mind that I'm going to do with all my old Posca paint pens. I get through them. I often buy a new one every month or so. So I have quite a lot of them li lying around and I haven't thrown any of them away because I have something in mind that I'm going to do with them. So anyway, um, even though I do know you can refill them, I actually saw a video, uh, the Frugal Crafter did a video recently about refilling them, which I'm going to test out at some point. But anyway, that's my art journal page finished for this month's collaboration video. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them down in the comments below. And I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you all in the next video.